Now on to the awards. Every year, we present several awards recognizing individual excellence. We typically present these awards live and in person. However, we're presenting these awards remotely this year. Now it's my great pleasure to welcome Elena Fontes Efflick, the NAM Home Secretary, Vice Dean for Academic Affairs at UCSF. One of Elena's many roles as Home Secretary is to chair the Membership Awards Selection Committee, and she'll present this year's Member Awards. Over to you, Elena. The Walsh McDermott Medal is awarded to a member of the National Academy of Medicine in recognition of distinguished service to the National Academies of Science, Engineering, and Medicine over an extended period of time. This year, I'm proud to introduce Dr. David Relman as the 2020 Walsh McDermott Medal winner. Dr. David Relman is the Thomas and Joan Merrigan Professor in Medicine and Professor of Microbiology and Immunology at Stanford University. His contributions have focused at the intersection of microbiology, emerging infectious diseases, national and international security, and the ongoing revolution in the life sciences and associated technologies. Since 2002, Dr. Relman has served on 11 committees, boards, or forums, and served three times as chair, co-chair, or vice chair. During Dr. Relman's tenure as chair of the Forum on Microbiobial Threats, he strengthened the role of laboratory science and emphasized the beneficial role of microbial communities in human, animal, plant, and environmental health. Dr. Relman has advised the Academy on technical and sensitive issues in international security and arms control. Dr. Relman helped lead influential studies that had a lasting impact on science policy in the United States and the global community. For example, the 2006 report, Globalization, Biosecurity, and the Future of the Life Sciences, resulted in the development of a process to assess technological advances for the risk of malevolent use. In 2011, Dr. Relman was vice chair of a study that reviewed the scientific approaches used during the FBI's investigation of the 2001 anthrax mailings. Currently, Dr. Relman is actively engaged in the National Academy's efforts to provide rapid responses to the White House's Office of Science and Technology Policy on the COVID pandemic. Please join me in congratulating Dr. David Relman as the 2020 Walsh McDermott Medal recipient. I am deeply honored to receive the 2020 Walsh McDermott Award from the National Academy of Medicine. To me, work at the Academy's feels less like service and more like a privilege for several reasons. The first is the importance of the mission, especially in times like these when independent, objective, evidence-based advice to the nation is so critical and yet in such short supply. Second reason is the importance as well as the complexity of the issues the academies have their greatest impact when addressing problems for which there are no easy answers. I have found these studies the most rewarding. And the third reason why I find work at the National Academy so gratifying is the opportunity it has afforded to meet and work with so many amazing scholars, creative thinkers, and thoughtful human beings. This includes the Academy staff, who I especially want to acknowledge for their tireless efforts, often behind the scenes, and for their key contributions, without which our efforts would be for naught. I have learned so much from all of these colleagues. In closing, there are many others who clearly deserve this recognition. Nonetheless, I am greatly appreciative. Thank you. The David Rawl Medal is awarded to a member of the National Academy of Medicine who has demonstrated distinguished leadership as chair of a study committee or other activities and for demonstrating commitment above and beyond the usual responsibilities. This year, I'm proud to announce Dr. David Eaton as the 2020 David Rawl Medal winner. Dr. Eaton is Dean and Vice Provost Emeritus of the Graduate School of the University of Washington. Dr. Eaton is a leader in environmental health research and policy. 
Beginning in 1996, when he joined the board on environmental studies and toxicology, he has chaired three consensus study committees, served as a member of five other committees, and served as reviewer and review coordinator several times. Under Dr. Eaton's leadership in 2019, the Committee on the Review of the Health Effects of Electronic Nicotine Delivery Systems authored an impactful report on the public health consequences of e-cigarettes. This report remains highly relevant as federal and state regulations are debated. As a committee chair, Dr. Eaton is recognized for encouraging camaraderie among committee members, allowing for collective thinking while balancing the need to integrate ideas into a cohesive report and leveraging the talents and expertise of committee members. Please join me in congratulating Dr. David Eaton as the 2020 David Rall Medal recipient. It's a distinct honor for me to receive the David Rall Medal from the National Academy of Medicine. Dr. Rall was the director of the National Institute of Environmental Health Sciences when I started my academic career at the University of Washington in 1979. His leadership in the field of environmental health sciences had a big impact on my career. I'd like to thank my doctoral mentors, Dr. Kirk Claussen and Dr. John Duell, both outstanding world leaders in the field of toxicology, for their unwavering support throughout my career. I'm indebted to the NAM member, Dr. Gil Ullman, for showing me how to be a leader, for believing in me, and for his lifelong support of my career. It's a great honor to follow the previous Royal Medal awardees, especially Bill Richardson, who was an early inspiration to me when he was the University of Washington Associate Dean in the School of Public Health, and later as Dean of the Graduate School, a position I later held. Special thanks also to the Royal Medal awardees, Dr. Jonathan Sammet and Dr. David Savitz, who I had the great pleasure of working with on several NASM committees, and from whom I learned a lot about how to be an effective NASM committee chair. Finally, thanks to the many wonderful and dedicated NASM committee members and staff who worked tirelessly to make our consensus reports both scientifically rigorous and impactful. The Adam Yarmolinsky Medal is awarded to a member of the National Academy of Medicine who represents a discipline outside of the health and medical sciences. The Yarmolinsky Medal recognizes a member's distinguished service to advance the Academy's mission over a significant period of time. This year, I'm proud to introduce Ms. Sarah Rosenbaum as the 2020 Adam Yarmolinsky Medal winner. Ms. Rosenbaum is the Harold and Jane Hirsch Professor of Health Law and Policy at George Washington University. Ms. Rosenbaum is a leading scholar of health law and public health, particularly related to the law governing Medicaid and the Children's Health Insurance Program. She has advised Congress and several administrations on issues ranging from national health reform, financing the health care safety net, child health policy, and the application of federal civil rights laws to health care. Ms. Rosenbaum has served as a member of the Report Review Committee for six years, chaired the Committee on the Evaluation of the Supplemental Security Income Disability Program for Children with Speech and Language Disorders, and served as a Section 11 Chair and Vice Chair for the Membership Committee. I note that I had the honor of serving on the Membership Committee with Ms. Rosenbaum and value her contributions. Before she was elected to membership in the Academy, Ms. Rosenbaum served on the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation's Health Policy Fellowships Board, the Committee on Oral Health, the Committee on Review of Priorities in the National Vaccine Plan, as well as consensus study committees focused on immunization financing and access to healthcare services. Ms. Rosenbaum is recognized and appreciated for her creativity in translating policy into law, along with her unwavering commitment to the underserved, particularly children. Please join me in congratulating Ms. Sarah Rosenbaum as the 2020 Adam Yarmolinsky Medal recipient. I am so honored to receive this award because of who Adam Yarmolinsky was and his service to his students, his colleagues, his community, and the nation. I was fortunate to be part of the Children's Defense Fund under the extraordinary leadership of Marion Wright Edelman, where I had the opportunity to meet Adam and hear about his career, including his seminal role in standing up the Peace Corps. Later, I realized the gift I had been given, time spent with someone who truly was part of the mighty 
effort to bend the arc of our moral universe toward justice. So many Yarmolinsky medalists are heroes of health policy, leaders who reflect the political and philosophical spectrum, but who are truly the arc benders in our world, an amazing group to be part of. Deep and long-standing health inequities grip this country now. They are taking a toll without modern precedent. Today, the battle over health reform stands at the forefront for our nation's fight over our soul. This award at this time from this institution and its members could not be more special. Thank you. Felicidades to all three award winners. At this point, I'd like to turn over the program to Dr. Michael McGinnis for the presentation of the Cecil Awards. Thank you, Elena, and congratulations again to our 2020 NAM Member Award recipients. I'm Michael McGinnis, uh, the Leonard Executive Officer of the National Academy of Medicine, and I'm pleased to be announcing the 2020 NAM Cecil Award recipients. The Cecil Awards recognize staff throughout the National Academies, the NAM, the National Academy of Engineering, the National Academy of Sciences, and the National Research Council, that is the whole complex, whose service has contributed significantly to progress toward the, the NAM's mission, improving health for all by advancing science, accelerating health equity, and providing independent, authoritative, and trusted advice nationally and globally. Each October, the NAM presents three Cecil Awards, which are accompanied by $4,000, a commemorative medal, and a certificate presented by the NAM president. It's a particular pleasure to announce the Cecil Awards and be able to recognize just a few of the many talented dedicated and hardworking colleagues I get to work with every day at the NAM. As we all know, it's all about people and it's the people at the academies that make the difference. We'll start off by announcing the recipient of the first Cecil Award, Anna Lee Espinosa Gonzalez, who is an, an administrative assistant in the Health and Medicine Division of the National Academies of Sciences, Engineering and Medicine. Anna Lee, is receiving the Sandra H. Matthews Cecil Award for Administrative Excellence. This award recognizes support staff members whose significant and sustained support has contributed importantly to activities advancing the NAM's mission. Anna Lee has been with the academies for over six years, first as a senior program assistant, and then as an administrative assistant in recognition of the high quality of her work and her ability to help build cohesive, highly effective project staff teams. Anna Lee juggles multiple projects for multiple supervisors and adapts nimbly to changing priorities and emerging issues that need attention while always maintaining a calm and positive attitude. She serves as a mentor to new staff and shares her knowledge and best practices freely with staff across the academies. Her colleagues note that, in a, a quote from the testimony, she is the consummate professional and that everyone wants to have Anna Lee on their team. Please join me in congratulating Anna Lee Espinosa Gonzalez. Tracy Lustig, Senior Program Officer from the Health and Medicine Division of the National Academies of Sciences, Engineering, and Medicine, is receiving the Cecil Award for Individual Excellence. This award recognizes an activity director or research support staff person who has made substantial contributions to the development and implementation of reports and activities of exceptional quality and influence in advancing the NAM's mission. Tracy Lustig has been with the National Academies for 14 years, and she's currently director of the Forum on Aging, Disability, and Independence. Her nominators all note that she is a thoughtful, efficient, and effective study director, carefully recruiting committee members, ensuring that all voices and points of view are heard, and serving as an expert facilitator 
of often contentious conversations. Her professionalism and attention to detail have led to highly impactful and widely disseminated studies, including the most recent study she directed on the impacts of social isolation and loneliness on older adults, an especially important issue in this time of COVID. Her past committee members have highlighted her thoughtful support, her ability to anticipate and ameliorate problems, and her careful management of the complicated committee and report processes. Her nominator noted in some, and I quote again, Tracy always has a positive, can-do attitude. The quality and timeliness of her work are exceptional. Her judgment is outstanding, and her relationships with volunteers and sponsors are unparalleled. Close quote. Please join me in congratulating Tracy Lustig. The Cecil Award for Excellence of a Group or Team this year goes to the team who supported the Culture of Health Promise of Adolescence report. Emily Backus, Natasha Blaine, Ivory Clark, Mary Gittleman, Samantha Phillips, Kirsten Sampson Snyder, Dara Shevska, Doug Sprunger, Elizabeth Townsend, and Yvonne Wise. This award recognizes staff of a group or team within the academies that have made substantial contributions to the development and implementation of activities that are of exceptional quality, influence, and importance to advancing the NAM's mission. The Promise of Adolescence, Realizing Opportunity for All Youth, report released in May 2019, was a critical contribution to the literature on supporting adolescent growth and development, and was greeted with high praise from sponsors and stakeholders. As this report would be identifying priorities for adolescents, the team understood early on that youth voices would be critical to informing the process. The team undertook a variety of innovative approaches to ensuring youth voices were incorporated, including holding a public workshop to hear from adolescents, conducting direct outreach via text messages, and assembling panels of adolescent representatives to provide feedback on the report's recommendations. This new method of soliciting feedback resulted in an outstanding and comprehensive report that is currently one of the most downloaded reports of 2019 and is among the top 2% of all times in terms of readership and it's been covered and praised in both trade and lay media. Please join me in congratulating the Promise of Adolescence Report team. Congratulations again to our 2020 Cecil Award winners. I'm pleased now to turn the program over to Dr. Gary Gottlieb, who will be presenting the Rhoda and Bernard Sarnet International Prize in Mental Health. Thank you, Michael, and good morning. It is a privilege to represent the 2020 Sarnet Prize Selection Committee in presenting this year's most deserving honoree. Since 1992, the Sarnat Prize has been presented to individuals, to groups, or to organizations that have demonstrated outstanding achievement in improving mental health. The prize recognizes, without regard to professional discipline or nationality, achievements in basic science, in clinical application, and in public policy that lead to progress in the understanding, the etiology, the prevention, the treatment, or the cure of mental disorders, or to the promotion of mental health. As defined by the nominating criteria, the field of mental health encompasses the neurosciences, psychology, social work, nursing, psychiatry, and advocacy. The award is supported by an endowment created by Rhoda and Bernard Sarnat of Los Angeles. Rhoda was a licensed clinical social worker, and Bernard was a plastic and reconstructive surgeon and researcher. The Sarnat's concerns about the destructive and disruptive effects of mental illness inspired them to establish this important award. It is indeed an honor to recognize this year's awardee, Stephen P. Henshaw. 
professor of psychology at the University of California, Berkeley, and professor of psychiatry and behavioral sciences and vice chair for adolescent and child psychology at the University of California, San Francisco. In his nomination letter, Dr. Matthew State, chair of psychiatry at UCSF, powerfully described how Dr. Hinshaw's work has exceeded the threshold of achievements in all of the Sarnoff Prize's domains. His efforts span developmental psychopathology, clinical interventions with children and adolescents, and program development related to reducing the widespread stigmatization of mental illness. Since 1992, Dr. Hinshaw has been the principal investigator at the Berkeley site for the multimodal treatment study of children with ADHD, the largest randomized control trial for children of any mental disorder. His major contributions include investigations of the value of psychosocial pharmacologic intervention for impairments and functional outcomes and the mediation of clinical improvements through enhanced parenting. Over the last generation, Dr. Hinshaw has become the world's leader in the investigation of girls and women with attention deficit and impulsivity, a group that has been neglected clinically and in research. His efforts are reflected in the largest prospective study of girls with ADHD, now more than 20 years old. This research has completely shifted the field's narrative and its focus. Dr. Hinshaw has also studied educational and legislative policies that are associated with increases in the diagnosis and prevalence of ADHD, discovering that requirements for school accountability and high-stakes te testing in the context of generally substandard assessment practices has driven ascending rates of ADHD diagnoses, particularly among low-income children. So testing-based policies clearly cause spurious rates of diagnosed prevalence, especially given the inadequacy of most community-based diagnostic practices. Hinshaw's work on mental illness stigma is broad, it is powerful, and it is original. His superb text from 2007, The Mark of Shame, provides unprecedented synthesis and a roadmap for overcoming such, such stigma. In its review, the New England Journal of Medicine wrote that, quote, Hinshaw's skill as a writer cannot be overstated. He is a passionate historian and humanitarian. His most recent book, Another Kind of Madness, A Journey Through the Stigma and Hope of Mental Illness, focusing on his family's severe mental illness, weaves together a moving, very personal narrative with a powerful plea for stigma reduction. It received the Best Book Award in Memoir and Autobiography from American Book Fest. Dr. Hinshaw is a magnificent mentor, a nurturing new generations of investigators in child and adolescent mental health, having taught thousands of undergraduates and hundreds of doctoral students. While his personal gifts to our field and to society are extraordinary, the power of his generativity and the magnitude of the policies and lessons informed by his remarkable science and his passion will ensure their durability. Dr. Hinshaw? What a singular honor to be selected as the 2020 recipient of the Rhoda and Bernard Sarnat International Prize in Mental Health, a daunting and inspiring list of past recipients. My selection may reflect contributions in three areas. First, clinical research on disorders of attention and impulse control, including self-harm, particularly for girls and young women. Second, the delivery of multimodal interventions to at-risk youth and third, empirical and narrative contributions to reduce the stigma that still clings to mental disorders. Yes, basic and applied science are essential, but so is humanization. My memoir, Another Kind of Madness, aims to promote understanding and reduce stigma through our family story. The journey ahead remains arduous and long, particularly in today's pandemic and era of heightened awareness of bias and racism. I am beyond proud to accept this incredible honor. I dedicate myself to renewed research, advocacy, and especially mentoring as the best students and trainees must enter our field with boldness, energy, and vision. Thanks to the National Academy of Medicine and thanks to my family. Thank you, Stephen. I would now like to turn the program over to Dr. Don Berwick, who will present the 2020 Gustav O. Leinhardt Award for Advancement of Healthcare. Don? Thank you uh, so much, uh, Gary. Um, 
And thanks to the National Academy for the chance to chair the Leonhard Award Committee and to my hardworking colleague uh, committee members. Um, in real life, we don't get to create our heroes. We have to choose them and we have to take them as they are, warts and all. But imagine for a minute that we could create a hero for today. Um, what would we design? In a time of a serial crises, our hero would remain calm, uh, exude trustworthiness, refuse to yield to dramatics, um, model balance when we feel off balance. Uh, in a time of uncertainty, uh, our hero would be honest about what is known and what is not known, uh, unafraid to declare what truth is if known and unafraid to admit to gaps in knowledge, even if the gaps are consequential. Our hero would sometimes say, I was wrong, because even heroes can make mistakes. And thereby our hero would earn trust, not squander trust. In a time of fear, our hero would give us guidance and a good dose of hope, not hope based on fantasy or wishes, but based on a career, a lifetime maybe of progressive illumination of pathways to scientific success. Our hero would have participated in, even maybe led, successful attacks on very hard problems and therefore be believable. We would buy it. We would buy the value of inquiry and science in seeing our way through. Our, our hero would help us be not less alert, but less afraid. In, in a time of opacity, our hero would be visible and transparent, not a narcissist, but a presence. Our hero's face and voice would become familiar to us a sort of touchstone, not hiding, not peacocking, just with us. In a time of tragedy, our hero would make us smile sometimes, not in triviality or in disrespect or in mockery, but the way our favorite uncle or our older sister makes us smile when we are crying, pointing out the sunset or the autumn foliage when we forget to look. Maybe our hero would talk a little baseball, which our hero loves, too, just like we do. <laughs> the Gustav O. Leonhardt Award for Advancement of Healthcare recognizes individuals for outstanding achievements in improving healthcare services. Uh, since 1986, when this award began, the National Academy of Medicine's Leonhardt Award Committee, I don't think, has ever had an easier year to select an awardee than this year. Uh, this year, we recognize Dr. Anthony Fauci. Dr. Fauci is the director of the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases at NIH. He's been a key advisor to six presidents on global AIDS issues and on medical and public health preparedness and response for emerging infectious diseases like pandemic influenza and SARS-CoV-2. He helped shape the president's emergency plan for AIDS release, PEPFAR, which has saved millions of lives. He is an esteemed uh, biomedical scientist who's made major contributions to research on immunoregulation, on therapies for serious inflammatory and immunologically mediated diseases, and the mechanisms and treatment of HIV AIDS. He's also a beloved teacher and a very skilled mentor. His national and international awards are far too numerous to recite. They do include the US Presidential Medal of Freedom. And as everybody here knows, uh, Dr. Fauci has well-earned stature today as our nation's most trusted, uh, ever-present, and effective guide through the dark times of the COVID-19 pandemic. It's frankly difficult even to imagine where our nation would be without his wisdom and his presence. So usually we don't get to design our heroes. We have to pick them. But this time, it's different. This time, our dream and our discovery coincide uh, designing from scratch a hero for 2020, we would without doubt have designed precisely uh, Dr. Anthony Fauci. Dr. Fauci, congratulations. Thank you so much, Dr. Berwick. I, I'm, I'm for that extraordinarily kind introduction. I'm, I'm very uh, humbled and moved by it, and I appreciate it greatly. I feel uh, that I've been extraordinarily fortunate in my career. I I came to the NIH, as some of you may know, it seems extraordinary now, but as a fellow in infectious diseases and immunology, actually 55-0 years 
ago. <laughs> I have to laugh when I say that, but it's true. Um, and I have been so fortunate in having the opportunity to be able to practice my science, my clinical work, and to ultimately become the director of the Institute 36 years ago. Um, and I want to thank uh, you and, and the selection committee for making this selection of me. I, 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 I feel you know, really quite humbled by it because of, of so many uh, worthy individuals throughout the country uh, for this award. Uh, I do want to make one comment, though, uh, that this is an award for the advancement of health care. But when I think of health care, and you mentioned the word hero so many times, you know, in, in my mind, I, I appreciate that very much for your saying that. But we're going through such an extraordinary time now with this pandemic that the real heroes there are the healthcare providers who are putting themselves on the line every single day, risking their own lives, taking care of desperately ill people with this extraordinary disease. And since the Lionheart Award is for the advancement of healthcare, and I'm receiving it this year, I want a real shout out to those individuals who are generally unsung. Most people don't know their names, but they're so important for our getting through this particular outbreak. So again, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Berwick and, and all of your colleagues for making this award possible for me. Uh, I will cherish it and I take it with a great deal of, gra of gratitude and also humility. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Don and uh, Tony. Thank you very much. Congratulations. I have to say it's a personal privilege to know you, to learn from you, and to be associated with you. You've done such great stuff for all of us. And so don't go away because we want to give you a special citation. And it's my great honor to present the Academy's first ever NAM Presidential Citation for Exemplary Leadership to Tony Fauci. So Tony, I ask you to come forward to receive the citation. The NAM Presidential Citation for Exemplary Leadership is awarded to Anthony Fauci in recognition of extraordinary service and outstanding contributions to biomedical science, healthcare, public health in the United States globally. In particular, I hope you can see the, uh, your, uh, your certificate pioneering advances in the field of human immunoregulation and life-saving therapies for rare immune disorders, seminal research and groundbreaking leadership in prevention and treatment of HIV AIDS, impacting countless lives now and in the future, enduring visionary guidance to the field of biomedical research globally and nationally, unprecedented public service as director of the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Disease for nearly four decades, distinguished service as a trust advisor to six U.S. presidents during public health crises, including HIV AIDS, SARS, anthrax, influenza, and Ebola, firm and steady leadership during the COVID-19 pandemic, offering an unwavering trusted voice to the nation and the world on behalf of science-based policy and public health. In recognition of these achievements, the National Academy of Medicine hereby issues its first ever citation for exemplary leadership and service to the Academy, to science, to public health, and to society. Tony, thank you so much for your leadership, and let's all Join in the ground applause, thunderous round applause for Tony Fauci. Thank you very much, Victor. Thank you. Would you like to say a word, Tony? No, Victor, thank you. I, I, I'm, I, I'm actually speechless here with both of these extraordinary introductions, both by Donald and yourself. Thank you very much. It's such a great privilege um, to be with you and to be a member of the National Academy of Medicine, of which I have been, as you know, for so many years. Thank you for this recognition. 
we have a lot of challenges ahead of us. And I can't help thinking that we're really, you know, going through a time that's disturbingly anti-science uh, in certain segments of our society. That's very troublesome to me. And we really need a, a group of scientists and physicians and healthcare providers really stick together in our principles because it is not going to be very easy as we go on with these challenges. This is a very, very difficult period in our existence. And we need to be the steadfast vocal defenders of the scientific process. So thank you very much. Thank you. And thank you indeed in my speech this morning. I resonated all the points you're making right now. We want to thank you for your inspiring role model for all of us. Thank you, Tony. Thank you. So congratulations again to all our deserving award recipients. Is in keeping with the tradition, I'm pleased to tell you we've announced the NAM class of 2020 this morning, another class of truly exceptional scholars and practitioners. We look forward to welcoming them in person next October. A press release with the names of the 100 newly elected members can be found at nam.edu.